Okay, so today we are doing Italian meatballs. These are awesome, made ahead of time and frozen. So if you're going to do it, might as well make a fair amount and then freeze the rest after they're cooled because heating them up is super easy. You can throw them back in the oven, frozen. You can nuke them a little bit, then throw them in your tomato sauce or you can just throw them in the tomato sauce frozen and super easy. Okay, so this is for five pounds of ground beef. You can cut this down if you want, but unless you're just making it for yourself, um, I would not suggest cutting it down too much because like I said, if you're gonna do it, why would you not want to make more? Because this is one pound. So that doesn't make a lot of meatballs. Okay, so we have, let's see, this is garlic, basil, parsley, um, bleh, Parmesan cheese, and then dry oregano. Then we have salt and pepper, 10 eggs, and then two and a half cups milk and five cups panko. Now we, you can also use breadcrumbs, um, basically what panko is. We found out that if you don't soak your panko in the milk ahead of time, ahead of time, sorry about that, um, you run the risk of it not being fully softened by the grease from the hamburger and then you get these hard crunchy bits inside and that's no fun. Um, you might think that this is a lot of garlic, but for five pounds of meat with everything else, it's really not. So if you go to change it, I would suggest making it this way first and then changing it. So when we would make 20 pounds of meatballs, we would use a stand mixer. I just don't feel like getting out my mixer because actually I don't think it'll take all of this. So just mix it by hand, it's not that big of a deal. Now like I said, these freeze awesomely and we would cook them all ahead of time, let them cool, pull out what we needed, freeze the rest, number and date the bags obviously, that way we knew exactly how much. Um, the Asian meatballs are prepared the same way and I will have both recipes in the description. The Asian meatballs you glaze with hoisin, hoisin, hoisin sauce, whatever, um, and then sprinkle, you can sprinkle a little um, sesame seeds and green onion on top. They are awesome hors d'oeuvres. These actually make fabulous hors d'oeuvres as well. You can serve them with a little bit of marinara and grated parm on top. It's totally delicious. Okay. Now I'm going to get these all portioned up. You don't have to do, we would always use a scoop, like an ice cream scoop, because it has the portion control. But that is not necessary. What is important is consistency, because you want consistency so that they all cook at the same time, they're all basically the same size, and so that is the most important part. And I highly recommend putting parchment paper down on your baking sheets because it <laughs> goes from scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing to just a quick, quick soap and done. It's very much worth it. So let's get these pans ready. Okay, one important thing that I forgot 
when this recipe calls for salt, I use kosher salt, which is not as salty as Morton. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, if you use Morton salt, I would recommend cutting it back a little bit. Now right here, all I'm doing is pulling out some meat and then, so this is my portion, they all look pretty good. Um, done this a time or three. So, the easiest way to roll, get a hand wet, boom, doesn't stick. You don't necessarily want to pack them in tight. Um, you just want to pack them enough so that they stick together and then put them down. Now these will shrink. Um, they will not expand. So you just want to have enough room in between them so that there is airflow and that's all you need. And the big big chunks of parsley and basil in there are just delicious so I will get this all done and then you cook them at 400 for about 15 minutes till they're done you can test them by popping one open uh, they'll be nice and crispy on the outside and that's also um, 145 internal temperature so you just want to make sure that they are done. So we'll see you on the flip side. Okay, so the first two pans are done. And I used 75%, 25% um, hamburger. And so there was a bit of runoff. My recommendation is to let that chill so it's set up. And then you can just throw it in the trash can. You don't have to worry about it melting a hole. If you have a can to pour it off in, definitely pour the fat off in. Um, but I'm just going to let it cool down and then just throw everything away. Easy cleanup. Now I have the meatballs in here so that the grease can drain off. These are tender. Yes, there's a cat there. These are tender. So you want to be a little bit careful with them. They will crisp up a little bit. Inside is nice and cooked. And you are good to go from here. Ouch. Um, so you can eat them, obviously, directly from here. You can throw this right in sauce or on top of your spaghetti. Or let everything cool completely and then freeze. So five pounds of ground beef, I counted. I had 138 meatballs, and these are about golf ball size. Um, you can easily get 140 out because my measuring wasn't perfect. If you're one of those people, and I know someone like that, um, you can totally measure it out, and so you get more. But 138, we're going to be set for the next couple of months with meatballs these do not give me an upset stomach because unfortunately a lot does but anyways these are delicious and you cook the asian meatballs exactly the same way as these this ended up taking 35 minutes i had to rotate the two pans i just have one in there now i really miss my convection oven um but there you go so just figure 400 35 minutes, double check to make sure they're cooked, and you're good to go.